welcome back to my Halloween series. Yes, we're going for Moaning Myrtle today. I went live last Friday and we went for Moaning Myrtle. I said I was dressing up and I did Moaning Myrtle, right? Well, you've seen the title of this video. I thought, you know, it was pretty fitting to do Moaning Myrtle again. The only thing is, I thought on Friday for the live that I'd completely nailed it. Whereas today, not so much, I've done it too white. But it's fine, we're rolling with it, okay. So yeah, in today's videos, we're gonna talk about the Hogwarts ghosts. They never really get spoke about, do they, the poor things? I mean, what happened to the saying, gone but never forgot it? So I thought I would do the honor of including them into the Halloween series, and we're gonna talk about the Halloween ghosts. We're gonna talk about their backstories, how they died. So if you wanna listen to this morbid video, then keep on watching. And if this is the first time you've seen my face, hello and welcome, sorry about it, <laughs> welcome to my channel. If you would like to become a Potter Poppy with us, please hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you're notified every time I upload a video. And guys, I am trying so hard to get to my next big milestone of 2,000 subscribers, so I'd really appreciate you hitting that subscribe button. And all my social medias are linked in the description of this video. Go see what I'm up to on those. And just quickly, guys, I want to say a massive thank you to all my Patreons. They help me keep this channel running just that little bit more. If you would like to know any more about Patreon, the link to that is also in the description of this video. Go check it out. If you think it's for you, we'd love to have you. Let's talk about the ghosts of Hogwarts. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the difference between ghosts and the portraits in Hogwarts because obviously the portraits are like ghostly figures of the people. Nearly Headless Nick describes becoming a ghost as a choice, saying wizards can leave an imprint of themselves on the earth to walk palely where their living selves once trod. But very few wizards choose that path because it is a feeble imitation of life. Some reasons why wizards choose to stay behind is for attachments, unfinished business, or regret. Now, living portraits are different. Living portraits are legacies. The more powerful the wizard, the more greater the portrait. Dumbledore portrait says, I am paint and memory, Harry paint and memory. Let's talk about the Grey Lady. J.K. Rowling actually originally called her the Whispering Lady. She is Rowena Ravenclaw's daughter, Helena. Is it Helena? Is that how you say it? Or Helena? I want to say Helena. I've got Helena in my head. But Helena Ravenclaw, Rowena Ravenclaw's daughter. When alive, Helena stole her mother's diadem and ran away. The very diadem that would be one of Voldemort's Horcruxes. Helena Ravenclaw died at the hands of the Bloody Baron, which is the Slytherin ghost of Hogwarts. He was sent by Helena Ravenclaw's mother, Rowena, to go and get her to bring her home. Finding Helena, he didn't actually want to bring her home. He offered to keep her freedom a secret as long as he could basically go along with her because he was in love with her. Helena refused and he went into a blind rage. He didn't mean to, but he killed her by stabbing. Young love, eh? So let's talk about the Slytherin ghost, the Bloody Baron. Obviously we're aware that he killed her, but how did he die and become a ghost at Hogwarts? After realising what the Bloody Baron had done to the love of his life, he loved it that much he killed her, because that makes so much sense. If I can't have her, nobody can. After seeing what he had done, the weapon he used to stab her to death with, he turned it on himself and killed himself. So his reason for staying behind was regret that obviously he killed Helena. And yes, he haunts Hogwarts as the Slytherin ghost. And he's actually a very feared ghost of Hogwarts. The Bloody Baron also wears chains and they are to be worn for an act of penitence, if I'm saying that word right. But yeah, that's why he wears them. The next ghost we're going to talk about is Nearly Headless Nick, or otherwise known as Sir Nicholas de Mimsy Porpington. Did I say that right? Yes, I just checked. Sir Nicholas de Mimsy Porpington. What a name. That is, so could you imagine the register that the teacher, like, no, no. Nearly Headless Nick is a 15th century nobleman and he attended Hogwarts. He was a wizard of the court of Henry VII. He fell in love with the Lady Grieve, who was a lady in waiting. Nick once attempted to help her fix her crooked teeth, resulting in giving her tusks. After the tusk incident, he was sentenced to death, 
but the head chopper person, whatever you call them, didn't do his job properly and only partially cut his head off. That's gross. Nick is very dramatic and even after his death he wrote his own ballad about his own demise entitled The Ballad of Nearly Headless Nick and he is Hogwarts Gryffindor's ghost. The next one we're going to talk about is the Fat Friar. He is the Hufflepuff house ghost. He is an absolute jolly man and he was also a Hufflepuff whilst he was alive. He is helpful and delightful and also very kind towards all the Hogwarts students. Not just his house students, but all the students because Hufflepuffs are amazing like that. But how did the Bloody Baron die, I hear you ask? I'm about to tell you. He was executed by his fellow churchmen after they come very suspicious about his abilities, magical abilities, especially with his cure for pox. I don't get it. Why would you kill someone so useful? He could cure pox. I don't understand. The next one we're going to talk about is Professor Binns. He is actually still a teacher at Hogwarts. Well, was still a teacher at Hogwarts as a ghost. He was a teacher of history of magic. Apparently his classes are known to be the most boring in Hogwarts. The only entertaining thing that ever happened in any of his lessons was the time when he entered the classroom through the blackboard. I can see that being pretty entertaining. But then again, you often see the Hogwarts ghost going through walls and windows and things like that. Don't you think the students would be used to seeing it all by now? But apparently that's the only entertaining thing that happened. So Professor Binns' death um, is quite a strange one. Basically, he fell asleep in front of the staff room fire and didn't wake up as himself he died in his sleep um he woke out of his body and went to his next lesson so he didn't even know and i don't know if he just didn't know he died he just carried on as normal that's pretty cool that's pretty cool to be honest and let's talk about Moni myrtle so Moni myrtle was a student at hogwarts at the same time tom riddle was a student at hogwarts and she died by the basilisk from the Chamber of Secrets. Alive, Myrtle was in Ravenclaw and she was constantly bullied and teased about her physical appearance. That's not nice. You don't bully. It's not nice. No wonder she was always moaning. I don't blame her, to be honest. I, actually, I don't blame her. If she was bullied, you go moan, girl. You go moan. She deserves a good moan. In June 1943, she was teased by a student named Olive Hornby. Myrtle was in a very sad way and she ran off into one of, the, one of the stalls in the first floor girls' bathroom. And the poor little thing just sat in there and cried. Bullying's wrong, we don't like bullies! Shortly after Myrtle entered a stall to cry her little self out, Tom Riddle entered and opened the Chamber of Secrets. When Myrtle heard a boy's voice, she asked him to leave. And with that, Tom Riddle turned the basilisk onto her, making the basilisk stare directly into her eyes, which obviously killed her. And that, my dear witches and wizards, is why Moaning Myrtle haunts the girls' bathroom on the first floor. Well, there you have it, guys. There are some stories about the ghosts and their deaths of Hogwarts. What do you think? Did you not know any of them stories? Did you know all of the stories? Have you got anything to add to these stories? Talk to me in the comments. You know how I love that. But yes, guys, that is the end of today's video. Please give it a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it because it helps me more than you know. And I will speak to you all in my next video. Bye, Pods Puppets.